Hi, this is Static Fire Gal, and welcome to Total Space Network Rocket Series. Joining me in this video is Miko, the host of Deep Dive. In this video, we will learn more about the Buran Space Shuttle and how is it different from the American Space Shuttle. In 1988, the world was surprised that the Space Shuttle suddenly got a new sibling. The Russians didn't just copy the American Space Shuttle. They might have designed a better Space Shuttle. Russian engineers did not blindly copy the shuttle, but instead went through the long and painful process of determining an original architecture for the Soviet equivalent. The Soviet its space shuttle only launched once. It was launched once because it was not flawed. Actually, its first launch was a huge success. There's a big difference in how the space shuttle and the Buran get into space. The Buran was unpowered. It didn't have main engines attached to it like the American shuttle, but instead it will be attached to a giant heavy lift rocket called Energia. The Energia consisted of a core stage and four boosters. While the shuttle with its integrated engines was more reusable in practice, it required intensive maintenance between launches. Once in space, the shuttle's integrated engines no longer serve the purpose. So that means there are thousands of pounds of that weight. This meant that the Buran could carry slightly more payload than the space shuttle. The Soviet shuttle has more flexibility. The Energia rocket could launch by itself without the Buran attached. The space shuttle's first stage uses solid rocket boosters. The Energia uses liquid fuel. The thing with solid rocket boosters is they cannot be shut down once ignited. And due to a sub-zero temperature launch, the O-rings of one booster failed, which led to the tragic loss of the space shuttle Challenger in 1986. The Energia liquid-fueled rocket can be throttled up, down, or even shut off completely in an emergency. Also, the Buran had an ejection seat for the entire crew. The Buran is also capable of a fully automated flight without any crew on board. This could have been used for a rescue mission and an empty Buran can be sent up to rescue crew of the space station or another stranded orbiter. So, what happened to Buran? Both Energia and Buran came on the scene when the last act of the Cold War was playing out. So by 1991, the collapse of the USSR and the economic crisis in Russia that followed left Buran and its infrastructure into decay. As the new Russian space agency struggled to raise funds, Buran and Energia would only serve as a display for exhibits in Baikonur Cosmodrome Museum. However, by 2001, poor maintenance had led to water leaking through the roof of the building and onto the spacecraft. On the 12th of May 2002, a repair team climbed onto the roof after heavy rains, but the roof collapsed, completely destroying the Energia and Buran and also killing eight workers. Some say that if only the Buran or at least its Energia launcher had survived the economic storms of the 990s, Russia and the world community would now have an advanced and powerful space booster capable of putting an international base on the moon and even sending humans to Mars. Where is Buran now? It is now abandoned in the dark over by Kanora Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Unguarded. Forgotten. The forgotten Soviet space shuttle deserves to be remembered. It deserved to be kept in a museum. It's always fun to speculate what Energia Buran could have been. If Soviet Union had continued flying it, it could have challenged the United States to build something to replace the space shuttle earlier. Who knows what could have happened, but what's even more fun is to see the plans for a fully reusable Energia 2 Uragan spaceplane. It was a planned successor to the Buran. It could have gotten us to where Starship is going to take us, which is kind of affordable spaceflight. Energia 2 could have lifted up to 100 tons to low Earth orbit. The rocket would have had the shuttle integrated into the core states. So basically, 
the core states was a bigger shuttle that could land on a landing strip. Energia 2 would have had four liquid-fueled boosters, just like the first gen Energia. But these would have been equipped with landing gear and would have been able to spread its wings. Boosters would have landed like an airplane, just like the core stage. It would have been great to see this fly beside the American Space Shuttle, maybe even on ISS. Let's hope we see something fully reusable from Rasa in the near future. Thanks for watching, I've been Mikko, the host of Deep Dive Fridays. And joining me for this episode was Static Fire Gal. If you would like to support what we do, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash total space. And you can join a group of amazing patrons. Anthony Mann, Warhawk, Adrian Moisa, The Angry Astronaut, Howard Walker, Sammy Oscuro, What About It, Chisuan and Sebastian from To The Future, Gio Bagliari, Framrick, Susie R, and Marco Magucci. Thanks for supporting us, guys. You can also find out more about us from our website at totalspace.net. See you in the next episode.